This video is going to be a commentary piece after reviewing the All-22 film this morning, specifically only of the Ravens' defense. Whose fault is it? Who's to blame? The coaches, the players on the defensive side again. Is it, is it us? Is it our fault as fans for having such high expectations? First of all, to answer that last question, I would say no. We should have high expectations. We should expect our guys to, to play better and more consistently. I'm going to give you some of my thoughts after reviewing the All-22 film again. That There won't be any actual film in this video. I'm going to, this is just short. Consider it a, a pseudo-reaction video version two. Just focused on our defense after the All-22 film came out. Number one, uh, we're not physical at all. We're not physical. We're, we're rarely physical at anything beyond the first level of the defense. And I mean inside linebackers, strong safety, nickel defenders. We're in, 12, we're in nickel against 12 personnel often uh, yesterday, and I thought that there was secondary yards there for the Browns, meaning the players they had on the field were just bigger and stronger and able to get a secondary push, surge, if you will, to turn a potential two- or three-yard gain into a five- or six-yard gain. The larger point for me, the one that really bothers me the most, is no one is playing assignment football. When, when there are RPO or pseudo-RPO looks, play action basically designed to look like an RPO. No one is playing assignment football. No one is reading three or four. So tight ends are releasing out into the flats, whether it's outside linebacker, inside linebacker, or in some cases a strong safety. No one is reading it and reacting to those guys at all. A couple of situations yesterday where, well, first of all, Kyle Hamilton makes two unbelievable plays on empty screens that everyone remembers. There was one in the first half, I think the first quarter, in fact, where Njoku is wide open. It's a three-on-two out in space, and Roquan is in recovery mode, basically pursuing from an inside-out angle, but he's a long way away. If Njoku catches it clean, it's going to be a big gain. I think Kyle Hamilton gets a gets a, a fingertip on it, but the NFL did not give him a credit for a pass defense. We don't play assignment football. Uh, thankfully, people don't run option a whole lot, uh, particularly the Browns with Jameis Winston at quarterback. But if they did, uh, we'd be in trouble. Very little contact made with wide receivers or tight ends. I'm just giving you my observations as I wrote them down going through the All-22 film this morning. I do have the film saved and a couple of videos queued up, but I wanted to record this first to get my thoughts out for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's frustrating for me to watch. I know it's frustrating for you as a fan. Number two, increasingly our videos as content creators are getting hit and the NFL is trying to uh, take monetization of them. So on some level, there has to be podcast style videos or content put out. My apologies for that. I would certainly prefer to show film the entire time. I don't think anyone wants to listen to my voice. I'm actually surprised if you do. But these are my observations and the things that I wrote down uh, in heavily in heavy dark ink because I was so pissed off by writing some of them. Another thing to, um, to point out, and this is kind of a, a more focused detail, our edge defenders will sometimes rip inside with no force player outside of them. So, and you can do that. And in fact, Oway does it twice Sunday and got away with it because of who we were playing. I think the left tackle for the Browns is is very slow um, and actually got away with two holds in the game. We're able to stunt inside, basically rip inside to the B gap inside of his his step because he's so slow and Oway is so is so much quicker. We can't. We're not going to be able to do that against the higher level left tackles, in my opinion. We're doing that sometimes with no force player to our outside, and there's space outside for the running back. I'm thinking of a play early in the first half. Nick Chubb got outside. Now, Millette actually was there uh, late, and then Oway made, finished off and made the tackle. A lot of cover three played yesterday post-snap, which is fine. You're trying to disguise the look. We may have to disguise things less. Because as we're playing our cover three or what ends up looking like a cover three, because people call it a match cover three, whatever, as we're playing that, if you were just to draw a cover three where players, quote, should be, the safety's not there yet because he's coming down from depth, a too high rotation. We may want to rotate a little sooner. This almost reminds me of a defense that we have to make less complicated. And 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 you would say that about defenses that are low awareness and low intelligence intelligence level during the play. And I don't think that applies to our defense. I don't think that applies to the guys we have on that side of the ball, but that's what it looks like. We may have to disguise less and show a little bit sooner. The nickel versus 12 personnel personnel um, didn't work out initially. I think the first three plays, they had an eight-yard run, a nine-yard run, and a five-yard run. And, and then we went cowboy, so we put both corners on the same side. 
allowed Hamilton to go to the side where the tight end wing were. And Ardarius Washington was able to get tackled for loss on one play. Kyle Hamilton was there on the second. Uh, I think it was like a two-yard gain. So we did have answers out of our nickel for 12 personnel. I don't think Njoku's a great blocker at the point of attack. Really, he doesn't give tremendous effort compared to other tight ends across the league. I thought the other guy was a better blocker, if you will. I want to talk about our defense from the standpoint of what teams are figuring out. Do I know specifically what they're figuring out all the time? No. I mean, each offense is different. It's its own entity. It's its own chess match. But what I will say is we continue to get shredded in the second half of games. Even the Bucks game last week in the fourth quarter, I didn't focus on a ton because we had such a big lead. But they were able to get a lot done in the pass game when they, when they went into pass-only mode. Well, look at what the Browns did yesterday. Here's four of their possessions from the second half. Opening possession, third quarter. 10 plays, 70 yards, touchdown. Then we force a punt. Their third possession of the second half. Eight plays, 72 yards, touchdown. So you're talking about 10 yards per play and nine yards per play. They get a field goal off a short field. I think they got the ball like around their 40, so they didn't have to go far. Eight plays, 32 yards, something in that range. And then the final touchdown, 12 plays, 74 yards. All told, 32 plays, 214 yards. So a little bit less than seven yards per play in the second half. I'm interested to see what the data shows as far as yards per play allowed in the first half versus the second. Essentially, what I'm offering to you is teams are figuring us out. They're figuring out what we want to do, perhaps based on coverage scheme, perhaps based on who we have the field. Maybe uh, it's time for me to do a field overlay of where we're calling certain coverages and doing certain things. That is a large-scale endeavor, number one. Number two, I'm not sure that Ravens fans are going to want to even see that content after four or five, six hours' work on my part. Um, I did think there was three holds, three obvious holds at the point of attack not called yesterday. Two on uh, the right guard, and in fact, he did have holds called on him, and then one on the left tackle, perhaps a second, so I guess you could say four. It's it's interesting to me that that is occurring because I feel like when we have direct, any hold, anything close to a hold at the point of attack gets called on us. And you, uh, and you can say, anyone could say, that's complaining about things that um, you shouldn't be focusing on because your defense sucks. There are times, and two of them in the first half, in fact, where those guys are holding at right at the point of attack, and there is no call at all, and that's just shocking. Uh, some of our third down stuff, I did not think that we made any contact with receivers or tight ends, even when we had opportunities to do so, number one. Number two, multiple guys are slow to react here. Millette, J.A.D., fine, those guys haven't played a lot. Or Darius Washington, another one. Eddie Jackson obviously struggled yesterday. I mean, the touchdown catch to Njoku is a difficult. I mean, it's a it's a throw that Jameis Winston makes and says, "Well, I'm gonna. Uh, I think my guy can go get the ball." And David Njoku does that, especially against us. It's a great play by Njoku. You have to give him credit. Kyle Hamilton got beat on a route by the tight end into the boundary. Now he eventually the other tight end, I think 88, he eventually got his hand in there to defend it, forcing incompletion. I think it was in the first half. My point in talking about some of this is no one is reacting at the line to gain. These are generally third down situations, what I'm describing right now. And to my memory recall, on our offense, when we have a third and seven, DBs are reacting. They're in tight coverage at the line to gain. We seem to be worried about getting beat deep often. From a deep defensive back standpoint, we either react late to the first cut now, and that's totally different from last year. We were overreactive to the first cut on third downs last year, but it served us well throughout the course of a 17-game regular season and the playoffs. This year, we're slow to react, and it's across the board. Our guys don't make plays on third and six at the line to gain. We give up, and, and the one that I'm going to reference is the third and seven with 120 left. We go sticks blitz zero, and Winston just throws it out to Moore on a speed out, and our Darius Washington is pushed off by that route. Now, he might might also be thinking about a pick, a rub, slant from the outside receiver because Moore was the number two receiver. But the point is, I, out of that coverage, you should react to the route immediately and and damn whoever shows up in the way if there's a pick or in that situation with a minute 20 left. There doesn't seem to be any sense of urgency in the guys on defense for this team. 
pretty much across the board. There almost seems to be a mentality of, oh, we'll make the next play, or oh, we'll get we'll get them next week. And and that to me, you don't see passion. I guess some would say and argue you can't see effort. You can't quantify effort visually. You can't see passion. I disagree. I think Lamar Jackson's playing with incredible effort and incredible passion. It's not being matched at all by the defensive side. In fact, it might be it might be a reflection of it, a negative reflection of it, I should say. The other one that bothers me is is two situations where we have leverage help as DBs and we're overreacting to the first move. There's a third down in the first half. I think it's a third and four. And both JAD and Millett overreact to initial in cuts or in steps by the wide receivers from a bunch formation. I actually posted it on Twitter already this morning. Well, Calvin Noy is assigned to jam or wall off any inside release from that bunch. He actually, on the snap, opens up to the bunch and looks to get hands on the receiver. Actually, he does. He forces one of the guys to fall down. My point is, both of those guys overreacting illustrates no trust at all in the player, Van Noy, who's assigned to wall off underneath drags, essentially. Now, you may say, you may say well, Coach, Van Noy can't wall off or jam both of them. I would agree. To me, the coverage we called in that situation looks like we're trying to stop or defend mesh. Both of those routes I'm describing, underneath drags, would be basically a mesh release, and Roquan Smith would be able to help out on inside leverage as well. We don't play to our leverage. At a, from a defensive back standpoint, nickel defender, strong safety, outside corner, we don't play to our leverage, which isn't always provided by Zach Orr's coverage, I will be honest with you, but that is something that, to me, illustrates a defense that doesn't trust one another. They don't, And you could say, well, Coach J.A.D. and Millette haven't been on the field a lot, and so I don't think they're representative of this defense. Have you been watching what we've allowed to occur from a coverage standpoint on third and five, third and six, third and seven this year? It's more than just those guys, in my opinion. The whole Marcus Williams situation, I have no idea. I mean, who knows who benched him? Did he take himself out? I, I have no idea. All I know is no one on that defense trusts each other. No one on that defense has passion to to be out there lined up. I don't see any pre rarely, excuse me, rarely do I see pre-snap communication that results in us changing our look or matching a route at all. We look like a, a team that's coordinated and ran by someone who understands how to stop the run, but has no clue how to stop the pass. And we're just throwing coverages out there across random situations with no rhyme nor reason. And, and that's just a outsider's observation. There's probably more focused, laser-focused analysis that could be done by people that are smarter than me on the defensive side of the ball. In my opinion, we look like, as a staff and players, we look like a team that is, is who we are at this point. Meaning, if we get into a, a, a game later in the season against a really good offense, and we come in extremely focused, Great effort, great preparation, high energy, defensive side of the ball. We're probably still going to get to middle, late third quarter and get start to get exposed. And what I, what I mean is that dynamic has occurred across decades of football. You can come in and play above your ceiling, above your level for a while, but eventually a great team, a great quarterback, a great offensive coordinator staff is going to figure out ways to exploit you. That's, I can't help but think that that's what this defense is right now at our best. And that sounds crazy or ridiculous because of how much talent there is on that side of the ball. Yes, we were missing Nate Wiggins and Marlon Humphrey yesterday. Marlon Humphrey's been the best defensive player for the Ravens this year, along with Kyle Van Noy and Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton, to me, however, there are plays where I see him and he doesn't look like he's reacting the way that I would think he should based on the read he has. And part of that I blame on Zach Orr because it's not just Kyle Hamilton. Multiple guys have reads right in front of their face, keys that should take them to the ball or the point of attack, and they're staring at the quarterback, frozen and reacting late, and that's creating more space for the offense, which in turn ends up being more yards for the other team. These are some of my thoughts after watching the All-22 film. I will have multiple videos up today and tomorrow and this week, just like usual, but this idea for somewhat podcast-related response to our defense I felt was warranted this week because of how unusual it was to go in there and allow 400 yards of offense to a Browns team 
that had only exceeded 300 yards of offense once this year. New play caller, new quarterback. I think it was borderline, the bo- a borderline type of situation where you have to look at all options if you're the head coach. And this may come back on Harbaugh too because as the head coach, there does come a time where you have to step in and try to solve things. Is he willing to do that? Does he have the energy to do that, the time? Is he capable of doing that? I don't know the answer to any of those questions. I know what the answer to all of them should be, yes. If you have to dedicate 75 hours a week instead of 62 or 64, you do it because you only play 17 football games across the span of 12 months a year in a season, I guess. And it's a limited opportunity for us as fans to go out there and support our team. Can things change? Well, the reality is look at the Browns. They had structural changes across their offensive side in the last week, and they were able to, from a fan base, move on from a negative situation last week, regardless of what we think about it, with Deshaun Watson being booed by the home crowd after an injury, and then show up this week at home and cheer their team on and help encourage them and actually influence the situation in some ways to allow the Browns to get a win and move to 2-6. and six. Their season is still over, but the point is, yes, we can recover the, from this as a fan base, as a defense from a foundational standpoint, a structural standpoint, I should say, At this point, through eight games of data, how much better can they get? Not much, in my experience. Absent structural changes, similar to what the Browns did last week, I'm not sure that changes can, that wholesale improvements can occur at the second level of the defense and the third level of the defense to get us anywhere close to where we think we should be right now. And that that brings me no no joy at all to, to give you guys that summary judgment. In any case, I appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of this style of video as a Monday morning reaction version number two. Hopefully we don't have to do stuff like this every week. Hopefully if we do, it's because of some other historic performance like another Jackson 5 or 5 interceptions next week at home against the Broncos. Appreciate you guys' time, man. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. If you think other Ravens fans uh, want to hear some more bad news and might enjoy this video as a result, then please consider grabbing this link, grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.